All right, this is a presentation on realistic and interactive robot gaze. I am David Bolin, and this is my ENME 475 final presentation. We're going to start off with a quick video demonstrating what this project was about. We present a system for creating lifelike gaze interactions between people and an animatronic character. Our architecture implements mutual gazing behavior demonstrating the illusion of life. We use a subsumption architecture to allow us to layer simple motor movements such as breathing, blinking, and saccades to create increasingly complex and lifelike behaviors. And that's the gist of the video that they've given. This was a video that was put out by the same people who put out the research paper. This research was carried out by Disney Research along with the California Institute of Technology and the University of Illinois, and it centers around animatronics, which is robotic puppetry and audio, usually to put on some sort of show. And it's the research itself is focused on improvement of animatronics, which has only become available through recent robotics improvements, things such as SLAM and computer vision, which we talked about in class. And it it, the general goal is an improvement of the immersion of animatronics displays, particularly in this particularly in this case for Disney Studios, whether it's theme parks or some sort of other interactive method that they've come up with. They're looking for more interactive animatronics displays, and they're looking for animatronics that can simulate life a little bit better than current animatronics displays. Then this particular research paper is focusing on gaze, so a steady and attentive look at something as opposed to a robot simply looking off into the distance and not really looking at anybody that's near it and just saying something. The task proper was to develop a system for lifelike gazes and human-robot interactions. This is what was listed in the paper. There is an emphasis on character animation and expressiveness because it is meant for animatronic shows and theme parks and things like that. and Another smaller goal was to develop a believable response to external stimuli, things that would that the robot would choose to interact with because of how it would notice them. And current animatronics are limited to more programmed displays. They're not really capable of responding to anything that's happening outside of them. It's just they put on a show, they do some specific movements that have already been pre-programmed, and then they're done. And as I mentioned earlier, improving robotics technology allows this sort of thing to start happening now as opposed to several years down the road. Like I said, things like SLAM, computer vision, are making it easier for robots to be able to pick up on things that are happening in the environment and react to them accordingly. The goal of this research was to create human lifelike gaze with robotics, and it combines the technical work that has already been done with gaze robotics gaze before with this sort of show and animation aspect. It's putting a different application to this technology. Before I go any further, I'm going to list off a couple of definitions just to ensure everybody's on the same page. So, so saccades are a form of rapid eye movement. So you'll have points where your eyes will focus, and the saccades are what happens when your eyes flick between those points. So you can't look at, two, at, some, at both of someone's eyes simultaneously. So what your eyes will do is they'll flick back and forth between the eyes. Whether or not you notice is something else entirely. Uh, habituation is a diminishing physiological response uh, to a stimulus with fre frequent repetition. And so that is, if somebody makes a loud noise behind you, you might be scared the first time, but each time they do it within quick succession, you'll be less scared. There's subsumption, which is the inclusion of a larger or more comprehensive thing in something that's more specific. And there is animatronics, which I've already described, which is just advanced robotic puppetry and the field of study associated with that. As for prior work, animatronics do have to start simulating life to become more immersive. You've all seen those old animatronics displays from like the 80s or the 90s where it's just a bunch of like animals playing on a stage or something. It's not really immersive. It's simply a show. It, you don't.
feel like those animals are lifelike. It's not, you don't feel like they're a part of the illusion of life that's happening. Uh, eye gaze is very important to human perception of human robot interactions. If a robot is looking through you rather than at you, you're not going to notice, you're not going to feel like that robot is alive. You're not going to feel like there is something there living looking at you. And face tracking and maintaining gaze have been covered in robotics before, as have uh, maintaining a gaze with uh, humans and humans being able to, ter to determine whether or not a robot is gazing at them. Humans use eye gaze a lot to determine your social interaction with equals. We've all experienced that to some aspect. And so decision making involving interest and stimuli have also been researched in the past. Both of these, all of these things are going to be used in this project very heavily. The platform is a custom Walt Disney animatronics bust. 19 degrees of freedom are on the robot itself. However, only nine were used. The rest of the degrees of freedom control the lip and jaw movement. And the figure was controlled with custom software. The camera mounted to the bust of the robot, or the torso of the bust, was a Mint Eye D1000 RGBD camera. It used the wrench library for computer vision, and it utilize, and it's utilizing graph slam and transformation matrices to determine where the eyes should be looking at, as well as determining where all the humans in the frame are, all the humans in the field of view of the camera are. So because this is an animatronics research project, there, the goal is to deliver some sort of show. In this particular case, to compensate for the robot itself having limited uh, field of view, compensating for system latency, compensating for not having any way to determine audio, uh, the character chosen to be portrayed is, is simply an elderly man in a park reading a book. He's simply trying to read his book and he's constantly distracted and he's looking at people. People will approach and he'll get annoyed at them or recognize them as friends and acknowledge them. However, he's constantly distracted by his book, so his eyes are constantly like either looking at the book or moving off in some other direction. The uh, programming architecture is composed of multiple parts. There's the attention engine, there's the behavior selection engine, and there's the behavior library. The attention engine identifies the environmental stimuli based on the computer vision and it assigns a curiosity score to each person that the uh, that the computer vision notices. It track the computer vision tracks the face and hands of everybody in the frame. And the attention engine assigns a curiosity score to everything. There's a habituation mechanic involved where if somebody's been in the frame too long and they've already been acknowledged or they're repeatedly doing something crazy, they won't be noticed as much. However, over time, curiosity scores can be restored to higher values by the habituation equation's second uh, term here. The behavior selection engine is more the high-level decision-making. So if the robot does notice somebody, what are they going to do then? There's four possible states. There's the reading state, where the man is simply sitting and reading his book. There's the glance state, where the curiosity score has exceeded the maximum for the read state, and the robot will glance up at the thing that's disturbing them. There's the engage state, where the curiosity score has risen above the max for the glance state. This can happen from the glance or the read states. And they will engage with that person, whether it's disapproval or acknowledgement, which is the next state, which is triggered from the glance or engage state. And it's only triggered if that person is recognized as someone that they are familiar with. There's also a database of guests with the appropriate data in the behavior selection engine, which stores the locations of the eyes and nose of the guests for face tracking purposes, as well as records for the habituation and familiarity aspects. Then finally, there's the behavior library, which contains pre-programmed uh, animations and poses for the robot to sort through. The way that the behavior library works is that there's several layers of animation poses which can interact with each other. There's the zero layer, which is when all the motors are set to zero. There's the alive layer, which simulates something that looks more like a human, breathing, blinking, things like that. And then there's the four states that I mentioned in the previous slide. All of these layers are hierarchical. So increasing layers of animation can modify, integrate, or suppress the lower levels of animation. So the engage layer can 
modify the alive layer and things like that. Uh, so uh, one of the major conclusions drawn from this was that the subsumption easily creates complexity. You can have several layers of simple animations that are done quickly by animators. And th by layering multiple systems in this way, you can create things that simulate biological reactions, behavioral layers, all of these sorts of things relatively easily compared to somebody trying to hand animate all of these things and keep it being realistic. Uh, something else that was drawn as a conclusion was believability is simply a function of time and distance. Longer and closer, closer and longer periods of time require more complex behaviors to be believable. So this particular implementation is suitable for short periods of time in close proximity. However, if you stand there for a long period of time, it quickly becomes much less believable. It doesn't seem lifelike. Physical and social interactability add complexity and believability to the character, as was demonstrated by the robot being able to interact with people socially. It made it a lot more believable, as opposed to simply a static display. The uncanny valley should also be avoided for obvious reasons for believability. Nobody wants to interact with a robot that makes them feel uncomfortable. And, and unfortunately, because there was no lip or jaw movement associated and simply due to the nature of the bust robot used, emotional range is still fairly limited. Uh, it was also found that saccades increase realism extremely. Uh, however, there's an issue with this robot where the eyes are mechanically locked as a... This is something that's built into the robot. The eyes are mechanically locked to be looking at something that's effectively an infinite distance away. They cannot focus in on something that is at a, at a close distance. So the robot tends to look through you. However, saccades are still possible. The robot still tries to look from one eye to the other. If you're at a close range, however, it's not going to seem as realistic. Finally, there, was, there were also a couple of conclusions drawn with tension tuning. Reliance on observations from the physical world lets animators very easily create new animations to control attention to stimuli for any robotics characters, any robotic characters, any animatronic characters. And there is an intent to work with more abstract stimuli in the future. However, this paper didn't really go into that. There wasn't much thought put into that. So th for final conclusions, uh, layering of simple behaviors can create extensible complex animations as were shown in the video. It's very easy to create simple animations that simply layer on top of each other and start to look more complex. They start to appear more complex. And a focus on gaze and animation can help create more interactable animatronics displays as shown again by the robot. This was, I'd say that this was very successful research in that aspect of trying to figure out how to create interactable, realistic robotic, robotic gaze.